This is as much as you will get from me about life. To ask you a question you ask in Hegel in a wired brain, are we living in a dystopian time or a time of dystopian fantasies, or both? Uh, it's a very good question because this difference is crucial. The only way I can account for it, let me be precise, which difference? Precisely, are we really more or less approaching some kind of end? Or is it just that in a strange way we are obsessed by the end? I think both are true, but not in the sense of harmony. The explanation I have is that we at the same time, we live in an era of what I call, following my conservative German uh, friend, uh, Peter Sloterdijk, we live in an era of cynical reason, where, you know, in the old times, the disavowal worked like this. You knew something is true, but you pretend that it's not true. And you, or you try to explain it away, and so on. Now we are entering a new era, I have in my next book, but also can impress later, of science, where uh, we learned, we, those in power, not me, we learned how to tell objectively at the level of facts the truth, but this very fact immobilizes us. Precisely the fact of talking about it instead of mobilizing us makes us apathetic, inefficient, and so on. For example, even at the level of art, because I'm here, not at the other place. Is there another place in Haver? I don't can... know. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, also. I've forgotten. Because uh, <laughs> if there is a thing I hate, and one of the things where I am tempted to act as a terrorist, like a bomb there, it's uh, this big art biennales. <laughs> Venice, Castle, and so on. Did you notice something about them? How... Uh, in their programmatic notes, to begin with, they say, we are all under capitalism, we are part of exploitation, Eurocentric, racist, blah, blah, blah. And then they go on, and the way Castle and Venice functions are perfect examples of pure capitalist uh, uh, commercialization of art. You see the paradox? You are telling it what it is, and instead of presenting you, it goes on. It wasn't the same with, uh, no, it was a little bit north, two years ago, when you remember the Glasgow conference on the prince, now no longer just prince, Charles was there, and in some stupid sense, although it's not, he basically told the truth, the danger, blah, 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 but nothing came out of it. And this is very close to me, now I enter. This is as much as you will get me, from me about life. I know that stance because I have it. It's the obsessional neurotic stance. You talk all the time, not to achieve something, but to make it sure that nothing will happen. That's why another detail from life, when I was 50 years ago, 40, in psychoanalysis, you can imagine how it looked. It was a Lacanian psychoanalysis, which means I could be sure that the session will not last more than five, seven minutes. So I talked all the time. Why? Because I was afraid that if I stop talking for a second, the analyst will ask me some really embarrassing question. <laughs> So you see this idea of being active to make it sure that nothing will really change. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.